Rita, thanks for sitting down with us. I love it. 
Man, this is such a great song, and um, I'd love to hear you talk about it. We've been going back and forth. You've been writing a lot of songs in the last few months, and um, I love that, that one of the themes that's emerged out of this writing has this, been this whole idea of light. Yeah. And even this song talks about that, that light piercing the darkness. Yeah. And um, man, there's like just so many stories in Scripture and, and metaphors about that. Uh, but talk about this song a little bit and just maybe some of the ideas around it, how that theme kind of wove itself into this song. Well, you know, I, I, I don't go into a project or don't even go into writing a collection of songs for something. You want it to be cohesive. You want it to kind of make sense. But I have lots of conversations with the Lord. And so I didn't know about doing up a follow, follow-up album from, from Battles, but felt like the Lord said, hey, I want you to follow up that album of fight or that, that Battles album, that album of fight, he said, with an album of light. Right. And so when, when he said that to me, it just sparked this interest of, okay, so what are you talking about? Well, there's so many beautiful concepts around light. And, um, and when you take it and strip it all the way back to being one of the first things that he designated, you know, a, a space yeah. into and a time and space into, um, it just led me down this path of all these little different aspects of how to write about light and and. Um, this particular song, you know, you, you, to me, it's like, how can you write about light without writing about power? You know, because there's, you know, we, t- we talk all the time about how light just cuts through darkness. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you can light a match in the middle of a pitch dark room and the whole room changes yeah. by, one, by one match lit or one candle lit. So um, that was kind of, that's kind of been the concept in this writing kind of season um, for these batch of songs. So. Yeah. And I love that, you know, in this chorus of this song, you know, it's that statement of there's power in this room. Yeah. And it's just such a great reminder of, and I think sometimes as, even as worshipers, like we, we gather up and we sing songs. And a lot of times we just, you know, we, we see what's happening in front of us, but we don't see. Right. You know, or at least let ourselves, our spirits be aware of what's happening yeah. in the supernatural around yeah. us. Um, and that's such a, a, a great reminder and a statement just to say, you know, there's power in this room. Yeah. You know, there's things that are going to change and fall. Yeah. I don't know how, as, as worship leaders or even worshipers, you know, you're entering into worship, you're singing about this omnipotent, great God who literally holds the universe in, in the palm of his hand. And so it's really kind of intentional to, to kind of make the statement, if you're here, then power's here. Mm. And if we're going to sing about power, um, then we're going to actually believe that that we're singing about power, the power of God. Then it's evident in this room right here. And I think in some ways it it releases God, gives God permission to kind mm. of do what He wants to do in the room. Yeah. Because if we just sing and never really fully invite those those lyrics or what we're talking about into our space, um, I think God can kind of hold Himself off a bit. But when we make that statement, oh no no no. There's power in this room. Mm-hmm. And so because of that, darkness has to actually scatter off to the side wow. and make it a demand more than just a, a cry or a plea. Um, I think we just stand up as stronger believers, you know. And Absolutely. So. Man, what a powerful statement. Yeah. Well, McKendry, thank you for joining us. And uh, walk us through what you're playing. There's a great, um, I love this song because it feels like a hymn in yeah. a lot of ways. And it's got this great, kind of counter melody that's happening on the keyboard. But walk us through that and just the chords on the song. Yeah, so um, the intro starts on the four here. Five, six, one over three, four. And what the, what the right hand's doing is just kind of messing around with that, with that sus and the triad. The two, and then back there, the four. That's kind of the intro and the, the bridge. Uh, the verse on the one, and then uh, and it goes to the four, the one, four, one, four, one, and six, and then four, and then it goes in the chorus. Um, and the chorus uh, starts on the four, five, back to the four, five, and then it goes four, five, six. Goes four, five, six, five. And the bridge is basically the intro. 
it's the same thing. It's a, yeah, that's the same as the outro. Wow. So, yeah. Well, really, Can I say something about yes, that? Yes, absolutely. What I love, what I, my favorite part of that whole song is that intro, that intro part. And, and um, I wrote the song with Tommy Iceland and, and Aaron Robertson. And Aaron's just this great keyboard player up at, at Elevation. And, and he, he kind of was playing that progression. And there are just chord progressions to me that it almost feels like it opens these little pocket doors mm. and the Holy Spirit just kind of walks in. And when he played that progression... I, I felt like the Holy Spirit walked in. And so I love that progression. Like I would play that, I play that progression over and over and over at home just because it's like if I want the Holy Spirit to come up. <laughs> yeah. So I love that progression. Yeah, and I love that it's beautiful. different than how it sounds like a hymn, but then it kind of has this walk down approach. So. Yeah, beautiful, awesome. beautiful melody, beautiful song. Thank you so much, Rita, yeah, for sharing it with so us. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks so much. <laughs>